Welcome back and in this video we are going to talk about equilibrium. So equilibrium is a, a simple condition of a body or a state of body when the body is at rest. But what makes a body uh, be at rest? So if I say this is a body of some kind, it's a ball or a spare or anything, and why doesn't it move? Why, why is uh, the ball not moving? Because uh, the sum of forces or the total f sum of forces acting on the ball is zero and there is no moment or net moment acting on the ball this is why the ball is at equilibrium so if if a body satisfies these two conditions and now sum of forces on the body becomes zero and the sum of moment on the body becomes zero uh, then uh, the body is at rest Let's just say there is a body and uh, there is force F1 acting on this body in this direction. So this is F1. Let's say uh, there is force F2 acting in this direction. So this is F2. Let's say there is F3 acting in this direction. And let's uh, add another force. Well, since we have, let's just say there is a 4 in this direction. So there are four forces acting on the body and the body is at rest. So this body is at rest. It means the sum of forces on the body is zero. Now how do you add vectors? You just simply find components along some axes and and then you add the vectors along those axes which makes a vector addition simpler. So I, I'm going to create uh, two axes. They are horizontal axes and vertical axis. So this is horizontal x-axis and this is vertical y-axis. We are on two dimensions. Now F1 makes an angled theta. F1 makes an angled theta with x-axis. So along x-axis F1 makes a, a component which is going to be F1 cos theta and along y-axis F1 is going to be F1 sine theta. Also F2 is going to have a component if F2 is making an angle theta 2. Let's say this is theta and this is theta 2. Then F2 is going to have a component along y-axis which is F2 sine theta and along x-axis it's F2 cos theta. Now also F3 is going to have component along x-axis if F3 is making angle theta 3 with x-axis which is F3 cos theta 3 and along y-axis in downwards direction F3 is going to make a component F3 sine theta. Same goes for F4 and the diagram looks pretty messed up. Now what I'm going to do is is going to assume a sign convention. We usually uh, say this direction is, uh, is positive for for horizontal and this direction is positive for vertical. So let's just say if total forces force on the system is supposed to be zero, then let's say forces along x axis should be zero and forces along y-axis should be zero. So this means the same idea force on the system should be zero. Now since we are assuming this direction to be positive let me just uh, write down all forces in x direction with their sign which we are considering in our case. Let's say this is F1 cos theta and let's say there is F2 Okay, cos theta 2 and F3 is making angle theta 3 with x-axis it's F3 cos theta 3 and uh, F4 is making an angle let's just say this is theta 4 then along x-axis it's going to be F4 cos theta 4 which is 0 so sum of forces along x-axis should be 0 and we used appropriate shine conventions depending on the direction of the forces. Now let's do the same for y-axis. So these are two relations for our uh, body at equilibrium. 
Now we talked about moment of a body, moment on the body due to forces. Now since all those forces are passing through the same point on the body, then these forces are not creating any kind of moment about that particular point of the body or on the body. So sum of moments is zero and and it's actually zero. There is no moment, so we do not need to consider any kind of moment on the system. So we we can use those two relations to, to do some maths. But the most fundamental idea is that if you have two unknown values or two unknown forces, then you are going to find their values using two equations. Now since we had a lot of forces and we, we never knew the values of these all four forces F1, F2, F3 and F4, we can't actually find out their values if all of them are unknown. So if two of the forces are unknown and two are none, then you can actually find out their values using uh, this condition for equilibrium, which is uh, forces along x-axis is zero and forces along y-axis makes a zero resultant. But if you had three unknown forces, that would be hard for you to actually find out uh, three unknown forces using two equations. Okay, so let's consider a case when there is a moment on the body and, and let's see why we need to have zero moment for equilibrium condition. So let's say this is a body and this is point O on body and, and let's say this is some kind of handle to point A and there is another arbitrary point B. Let's say there is a force of, of, of 5 kN acting at this point and this distance is let's say 5 meters. This force at point A is going to create moment in this direction. Now in our sign conventions, or um, uh, particularly me, I use uh, this direction as positive. So this clockwise direction for me is positive. You could just say counterclockwise you could say counterclockwise is positive and and still you're actually going to find out the same magnitude of the moment okay the the actual value of force is going to be same but you're just assuming a different sign convention which doesn't make a difference so for my videos for me i always uh, tend to to take a clockwise direction as positive for moments so at point A there is a positive moment which is going to produce the, the value of moment at A is actually 5 times 5 25 kilo newton meters now point B is at a distance let's say it's 2 meters and the same force the same force of 5 kilo newton as is acting at point B so this is point B. So moment about B is 10 kN meters, which is, is, which is in this direction. So if I say uh, 25 kN meters is positive and 10 kN meters is negative, then total moment is actually uh, 15 kN meters and is and is along this direction two different forces acting at two different points. If we find the resultant of those two forces, then the resultant is actually zero. But they are actually producing some kind of moment about point O, which is 15 kN meters in this direction. In this direction, actually. So, for a body to be at equilibrium, not just forces uh, should have a, a zero resultant, also the total moment or the, the total sum of moments should be zero. That's why we have cases, that's why we have three cases, fx and fy should be zero and total moment should be zero. For the case of concurrent forces, we don't consider this case, we just say fx and fy are zero since the, those forces are not going to create any kind of moment about a certain point O through which they are actually passing. So it doesn't make a sense. These uh, relations are for two-dimensional geometry. For 3D, for if you're considering the case of three dimensions, then we have three axes, x, 
let's say this is x, this is y, and z axis. So we should have forces along x, 0, forces along y, 0, forces along z axis, also 0. Also, same goes for the moments. So this is pretty much for equilibrium. Equilibrium is the condition of body when it is at rest and which means the total sum of forces on the body is zero and there is no moment on the body. And for two dimensions we have three conditions for equilibrium which and these two conditions are just for the force which is should be zero. And for three dimensions we have six conditions for equilibrium and for concurrent forces we have fx and fy equals to zero or simply sum of sum of forces should be zero and forces don't have moment about the same point they are passing. So that's all pretty much for equilibrium and uh, and I'm gonna be solving a couple problems from, from this uh, unit uh, which will give you a uh, clear understanding of those uh, resultants and equilibrium conditions. That's all in this video and thanks for watching.